In this lesson, we're going to be looking at how to write the methodology section, also known as the materials and methods section. Um, and this section is important for a number of different reasons. I would say it's probably one of the most important sections to really validify your work. Um, it helps to show how reliable your work is. So an unreliable method would suggest that your results are also unreliable. Secondly, it shows that your work is accepted amongst um, your field. So if everyone in your field is doing a certain method and using a certain material, you want to use a similar thing to be accepted um, for being reliable and for being rigorous. Thirdly, uh, you want to include limitations. And so the method section includes these obstacles and these barriers that you might have gone through whilst doing your research. And so it shows that you've um, identified issues, you've overcome them, and you've had a positive outcome. And lastly, they allow the paper and your research to be replicable. Usually, especially in the biological sciences, is you'll redo someone else's experiment in order to build upon it in your own, um, in your own unique way. So to have all the methods there means that you're not constantly trying to contact people to find out every small detail to be able to actually um, carry out that bit of research. Let's think about your thesis overview again. You're starting off with the abstract then the literature review, which we just talked about in the previous lesson, and then your methods and materials section. So it comes just after the literature review. So your lit review is kind of the what, so it's what you're doing and sort of why you're doing it. It's the justification. Your methods and material is sort of the how. So how are you doing it in, in sort of it, what's your approach and the results and the discussion will be based on your approach um, and based on what the gap is that you're trying to fill um, from the lit review even start to write the materials and the methods chapter you need to gather the content but it's everything every single thing that is required to collect your data everything from what the inclusion criteria is for your interviews what cell type you use what concentrations you use um, what type of rock you've looked at every single detail that is needed to collect your data to run the experiments and to investigate the hypothesis it's better to go into more detail and to give more information than it is to lack information so these are the things that you want to include in, your, in, in this chapter. Firstly, the type of research that you did. So this can include um, kind of whether your research is quantitative or if it is qualitative. Um, so there's, there's a distinct difference between them. So you need to think about what kind of research it is that you're doing, how you collected or selected your data. So what are your methods? So exactly... I guess the key word that I would use to think about this is how, how did you exactly do it? So what were the particular steps that you took? If you are running, for example, a focus session, how did you recruit the participants? And um, what was your inclusion criteria? What were the exclusion criteria? What are the ages? What were the genders? Um, how, how long did you have? What did you do? What was your role as, a, as, a, as an interviewer? Um, every single detail needs to be there. How you analyze your data. So this would be the stats. The type of stats that you use can heavily determine whether your findings are significant or not. You need to be able to justify why you use those particular stats um, and what your reasons were behind using them. Um, and what you can do actually for this section if you're struggling with stats is to visit your university. Every university has a statistician and those are people, scientists, <laughs> obviously they're people, they're people who are um, trained to identify uh, patterns within data and are experts in knowing what kind of uh, analysis you do for different data types and different comparison types. And for example, if you use any um, other software that needs to be there, if you use, um, for example, let's say it's, I use a microscope, I use electron microscopy, that was a massive tool that I used um, and that should be in there as well with all the detail that I've used. Then lastly, your rationale for choosing these methods and I think this Number five here is what I'm going to emphasize a lot in this lesson. Um, the rationale should be the one standout point throughout your materials chapter. You're constantly justifying everything that you've done. I'm doing qualitative because, I'm doing quantitative because, I chose this stats because. It's the whole chapter, I would say, is justifying why, what you've done and why you're doing it. Now that you've got all your methods, you've got a list of all the methods, all the materials that you're using, you need to think about how you're going to arrange this content. So there are two ways of arranging it. You might want to use chronological order. Um, so chronological order is within the order of time. So time as in how your, what your process looked like. 
what your journey look like um, of this research. So this is particularly the case when you're doing um, more qualitative research, purely because you're probably going to start with um, identifying your question, finding a research question. Then you might want to go to the ethics committee for your university and get approval. Once you've got that approval, you might want to write the questions out properly um, and then print them out and then go and stand outside the library or go and recruit your participants somehow. Um, and then once you've recruited them, you want an inclusion criteria, an exclusion criteria, um, and then you want to bloody blah, blah. So that's your chronological order in terms of time and that should be the order of your methods and material. And that makes sense for that kind of project. Whereas for me, I use a more method type arrangement. And I used three types of cells. So I used M2 cells, I used HeLa cells, and I also used another cell called HEC293. Now these are three very different types of cells. Um, and so what I did was I stuck to describing my methods in terms of the different method subtypes. Look at your content, take a look at the list of methods that you've written and try to think of an order. What makes sense? If someone were to replicate your work, what order would make sense um, for the content? Firstly, I've got cell culture and this is sort of the main um, first method that I use, as I mentioned earlier, with the different cell types. Then secondly, I've got transfection. So transfection is where you manipulate your cells to change a characteristic about them. So you can study and track the effects of that deletion. And that's what you call transfection. Um, so I did a few different transfection studies, SHRNA and SIRNA, which are sort of long-term deletion or short-term deletions. And all the de those details are there. I then did transduction, which is another type of deletion um, or manipulation even. And then some imaging um, and some molecular biology as well. I believe I had some more sections, but with the interest of space, I've just shown you those five there. And what you can see is that it's really broken down in terms of method. Now, you can kind of say that I've sort of used the chronological order because generally you'd, you'd start from the cell culture, you'd look after your cells, you'd then manipulate them, you'd then image them. So during my master's at Imperial College London, this was the structure that I was presented with by my supervisor and com it completely changed my life and it's going to change yours in a second. Hold on. This is the structure that you want to use when you write every single method section. So as you saw from my method section, I had loads of subsections. Each of those subsections are laid out like this. There are four parts to each subsection. So starting off with number one, you have the general overview of the subsection. So a bit of an introduction, you're kind of orientating the reader, you're reminding them of what you're doing and why you're doing it, you're justifying it, and you give some background information. So if you're using a particular technique um, or a particular approach, you just give a reason why. So I'm doing interviews because interviews are great. You know, give your reason why in an academic scientific way. Number two, you want to give specific detail about the method. So you've justified, you've given your intro, then you want to give that detail. So that's where the juice is. That's where all the info and that's where the nitty gritty um, concentrations are and the ratio and the percentages, all of that's in here. Continue to justify your choices. You're justifying here, you're also justifying here. It never ends. You're constantly justifying why you're doing what you're doing and how that adds value to your particular work. Importantly, in the second section, you also want to give emphasis on the care that you've taken. So you're, you're working with some cells, you're throwing the cells onto your lab bench. That's not what we want to hear. We want to hear that you've gently placed them on the lab bench. You've given them some care, love and attention. That is what you want to say when you are um, describing your methods. And I'll show you some language that, that can really point you towards that. Then thirdly, your analysis and processing. So what is your analysis? Um, what statistical approach did you take to determine the um, validity and sort of, I guess, the final results? And then lastly, your limitations and your solutions. No experiment comes without limitations. Every experiment has you know, issues um, and you have to overcome them. So here in this section, you want to give detail. So like I said, this is the, the order for every subsection, any method you describe, no matter how large, how small, how, how kind of uh, irrelevant it is or it might appear, you want to justify everything that you've done using sort of this um, layout. 